Welcome to the hottest movie review on the internet today, The A-List Review. I am your host, the Game Changer, Wes Troop, and it's time to go back to the couch, because this is a film that is streaming exclusively on Netflix, Blech. and I don't know if I have enough tequila for this movie, but we're going to do it anyway. My review of the 2024 space opera epic, Rebel Moon Part 2, The Scar Giver, coming up now. Korra and the surviving warriors prepare to defend their new home, Velt, alongside its people against the realm. The warriors face their pasts, revealing their motivations before the realm's forces arrive to crush the growing rebellion. So what did I think of Rebel Moon Part 2, The Scar Giver? I thought it's a terrible epic space opera sequel. It's directed by Zack Snyder, who also co-wrote the script and served as cinematographer, who's best known for films such as 300, Watchmen, Sucker Punch, Man of Steel, Batman vs. Superman, Dawn of Justice, his version of Justice League, and of course, Rebel Moon Part 1, A Child of Fire. While I only watched the first part five months ago, I barely remember anything about it until this part began. Much like the first entry, I can say the visuals look great, and that's about it for positives. Of course, Snyder is famous, or infamous, for his slow-motion shots, which can be hit and miss in any of his films, but here it's worse than usual, beating us over the head with seeing the villagers working in the fields and throwing wheat in the air. The battles are loud with tons of explosions, but we've seen them done better hundreds of times before, and they're mostly painfully mediocre and sometimes even bland. The final battle does have a few entertaining moments, however. It once again steals from other films, from Star Wars, even to the point of a character getting their robotic arm cut off in a lightsaber duel. The Seven Samurai, The Magnificent Seven, A Bug's Life, and there's even a character that looks like Furiosa. The writing for the story is lazy, with awful dialogue, and it's almost like the script was written down while watching a child taking action figures out of their toy box and playing with them. In its first half, we get backstories for each character in Flashback City, with one after another. While it's nice to try and give them some development, it's a little too late, as I didn't care about them from the first film as their generic one-note bores. The rest of the story is basically just a setup for the big final showdown. There are some bits that are unintentionally funny as well, with a highlight being a flashback where musicians are playing violins as people are being killed in front of them. Any moments that are supposed to be emotional don't hit either. It's such a drawn-out project as this two-part movie could have easily been edited down to one two-hour film. It still would have sucked, but at least it would have only been one half the waste of time. The cast stars Sophia Botella as Cora, the former Imperium soldier who rallies warriors from across the galaxy to fight against the Mother World, Jimon Hansu as Titus, the former Imperium general leading the fight against the Mother World, Ed Screen as Atticus Noble, a.k.a. Darth Bolcut, the laughable villain with the Lloyd Christmas haircut, Michael Heisman as Gunner, Cora's love interest and farmer who joins her in defending his home world, and Anthony Hopkins as the voice of Jimmy, the last member of a race of mechanical knights. Rebel Moon Part II, The Scar Giver, and its predecessor, along with most of the other Netflix films that have been recently released, are more than enough reason to cancel a subscription. Number-wise, I'm going to give it a 2 out of 10. Overall, for both parts, that's a 5 out of 20, which gives it the rating of Rebel Moon, I only got two words for ya. Suck it. 
All right, well, that's the show. I'll be back with another review very soon. But until then, don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe right here on YouTube. YouTube.com slash Westside to 515. Like the show on Facebook, Facebook.com slash West True Playlist. And of course, you can follow me on the Instagram and letterboxed at West A List. Until next time. Troop. Out.